Welcome to What the World Needs is Jesus broadcast. We got a great message today coming from Brother Ricky Phillips. He's going to be preaching to us out of 1 Timothy, 1st chapter, verse 12 through 15. The title of his message is, Are You a Chief Sinner? Let me tell you, God can use a chief sinner. Then we're going to have a song from Sister Rita Cardi. She is going to be singing, Praying. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead, subscribe, click the bell, turn on your notifications on YouTube, follow, like, and share us on Facebook, and check us out on Instagram for some inspirational posts. Now let this video bless you. What a joy it is to be with you here today on What the World Needs is Jesus Broadcast. Excited to be here. Excited to be coming to you from What the World Needs is Jesus Studios. Man, I tell you what, we're getting out all over the world. Amen. From right here in this little old studio, we're getting out all over the world. Getting the Word of God out all over the world today. Man, I'm so excited. I'm so glad. I'm so proud to be part of something that, that God has uh, prophesied the the Bible is prophesied back in the old days and and the and the good thing about all that is we get to be a part of it amen we get to be a part of what they prophesied way back thousands of years ago amen we get to be a part of fulfilling that prophecy amen you know uh, uh you know uh 20 30 years ago you couldn't get out all over the world from uh uh anywhere I mean you couldn't uh, somebody would say, well, you're going to uh, be able to preach the gospel all over the world from one place, amen. We'd have laughed you right out of there, amen, because there wasn't no way. Wasn't no way to do that, amen. But today, we have the internet, amen. We have the internet. The old devil uses it for his glory, so you know what? We're going to use it for Christ's glory, amen. We're going to use it for God's glory, and we're going to get his word out all over the world, amen. We're going to get it out everywhere that we can get it out to today, amen. I'm proud today to be part of that thing going on with God's uh, uh, prophecies from the old Bible, amen, from back thousands of years ago, amen. Just to be part of that, amen, makes me excited, glory to God. And I want to tell you today, we appreciate you today for listening, for, for watching What the World Needs is Jesus. Uh, uh, boy, I just appreciate everybody that helps us here and all the ones that... Uh, uh, get to come and preach, man, all these preachers, they're just something else, amen, they just come up here and preach the word of God, amen, and we just get it out all the places that we can get it out, amen, and I'd just like to say thank you to them folks, amen, thank you for the ones that help us doing the, uh, uh, running all the equipment here and doing all the stuff behind the scenes, amen, and making all the stuff you have to make, this, this is, this is not a one-man job, amen, one man can't do all this, and I thank God that he sent me all these people that can help us, amen, that he can, he sent us everybody that can help us that we need to get this thing going, amen, to keep this thing going and keep it rolling, amen. I tell you what, God is in charge, amen. God has a plan for you. He has a plan for me and he has a plan for this broadcast and I believe it's to get out all over the world, amen. I tell you what, I just, I, I just have confidence that God's going to get it out where we don't even think it can be got out at, amen. God's going to get it out everywhere, amen, everywhere that he wants it to go. You know what? It'll go, it'll go exactly the places that God wants it to go, amen. That's just the way it is because that's the God we serve, amen. We might not think it can get here, can get there, but I guarantee you it'll get where God wants it to get, amen. It'll get there, glory to God. Even if, even if man can't do it, we can't see in our mind or our eyes. We can't see how to happen. If God wants it there, he'll get it sent there. Amen. Glory be to God. I tell you what, I love him today. I love the Lord today. I thank God today. Amen. Just to be part of this. Glory be to God. I tell you what, if you don't know Jesus today, it's our heart's desire right here at What the World Needs is Jesus that you find him somewhere, somehow. Amen. I tell you what, we don't do things with a with a uh, uh, with a uh, program, amen. We just come up here and just get started, and we just go with it, amen. So I tell you what, we don't have to have an altar call at the end of the service. We don't have to have one in the middle of the service or the beginning. We just uh, uh, we just want to have one, amen. We want to say that. Listen, all you have to do is call on the name of Jesus, amen. Just call on him, 
and he'll answer that call, amen. He's waiting on you to call, glory to God. Listen, if you feel that little tug at your heart, that's Jesus, amen. That's Jesus saying, call on me, I want to talk with you, amen. Call on me, I want to uh, talk back and forth with you, amen. Boy, I tell you what, get along with God and there's no other way to be, amen. There's no other way. Listen, you get along with God and sit there and talk to him, you'll be a changed person, amen. I tell you what, God is so good to us, amen. And you know what? He loves us, glory to God. He loves us. And the way I know that he loves us and I know that he loves you today is because he gave his only begotten son that me and you, that me and you, not only the, uh, 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 not only the lost and the saved and the born again, not only ever, uh, uh, he gave his only begotten son for everybody, amen, for everybody. Because you know what? I was lost at one time myself, glory to God. I was lost, out running around the world doing what I wanted to do. But Jesus died for me, amen. He died for me that I could, listen, I've done awful, awful things. I've done things that you shouldn't do. I've done things I knew better than do, but I've done them anyway. Amen, I tell you what, I tell you what, God's long-suffering. He's coming back, you know, and it's not going to be much longer. You know, you, you know, we chance it, amen, we go from service to service, and we'll, we'll, we'll stand there in the service, and you feel the power of God drawing you, and you'll stand there and fight it, and you'll say, well, I'll do it next time. Uh, uh, don't necessarily even have to be in a service. You could be listening to this, amen. You could feel the power of God draw you. And, and you need to go right then. You don't need to wait. When you feel the power of God draw you, you need to go right then. Amen. You need to go right then and pray to God and ask Jesus into your heart. Amen. Because you know what? We're going to keep fighting that. And one day we're going to say, no, I'll do it the next service. No, I'll do it the next time I watch the broadcast. No, I'll do it the next time I hear a preacher preach or the next time I feel the power of God drawing me, I'll do it then the next time I feel that. Let me tell you something, friend. They might not be a next time. Hey, man, there might not be a next time. We're at the, you know, I was talking about us being in the, uh, uh, in the prophecies of the Bible. Hey, man, most of them prophecies are end time prophecies where we live. Hey, man, because the end times are not coming. They're not about to be here. The end times are here. We're living in the end times today, amen? So that tells me that Jesus is about to step out on that cloud. Listen, he says no man knows the day or the hour, and nobody knows the day or the hour, but he said we can tell that it's even at the door. He can, we can tell that he's even standing right there at the door, fixing to open the door and come and get his children, amen? And if you'll read the Bible today, if you'll read the Bible and you'll watch what's going on in the world, you'll find out exactly where we're at today. We're at the end, amen. We're at the end. Jesus is about to come back and get his church, amen. Jesus is about to step out on that cloud. He's going to blow that trumpet, bless God. And if you don't hear it, amen, if, you don't, uh, uh, if you're not saved, if you're not born again, glory to God, you're not going to go, amen. He's going to blow that trumpet, and then he's going to say, come on, my children. But if you don't know him, if you hadn't turned your heart and life over to him, if you hadn't become a born-again child of the living king, amen, born again is, he told Nicodemus over in, in John chapter 3, I believe it was, you must be born again, amen, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. If you want to see the kingdom of God, you've got to be born again, amen. You know how you become born again? You ask Jesus in your life, amen. It's a spiritual birth. It's not go back in your mother's womb and be born again because you're already old. That's what Nicodemus was saying. But listen, it's not that. It is a spiritual birth. We have to be spiritually birthed into Jesus Christ, amen, through the Spirit of God, amen. And then you'll start living, amen. Then you'll really start living whenever you get the Spirit of God. When you get the love of Jesus right down in your heart, amen, I tell you what, he'll change you. And he won't stop changing you, amen. You'll just keep on changing and changing. And listen, you'll get better and better and better as the days go on. I'm not telling you today, I'm not telling you that anything's, everything's going to be all right, that you're never going to have trouble, you're never going to have problems, you're never going to have situations. I'm telling you today that whenever you do have problems, you do have situations, you do have trials, and you do have tribulations that come against you, I'm telling you today that Jesus will be right there with you, amen. He'll be right there walking side by side right there where you're at, amen. No, no other way around it. That's the only way to live today 
in these days and times, man, I tell you what, I'd hate to know that I had to live without Jesus. Amen. What a comforter he is. What a comforter. He said, when I go away, you know, the disciples were standing there on a hill whenever uh, uh, Jesus was uh, uh, going back to the Father. The angels was there, and, they, they, and as Jesus ascended into heaven on the cloud, they looked at, uh, they, the angel looked at all the disciples, and they said, why stand ye here gazing at this, at this beautiful sight? Amen. I'm just paraphrasing. Why stand ye here gazing at this beautiful thing as Jesus leaves, amen, to go back to be with the Father? They said, because one day he's going to return the same way he just left, amen. He's going to come back on that cloud, amen, and I believe he's going to come back and get us, glory to God. He's coming back after his church, glory to God, and that's going to be us, amen. That's going to be us. I think he's coming back after us, and he don't want it no other way but us be looking for him, amen. He won't have it no other way. We got to be looking for him, and we got to be born again, well, we're going to be left here, amen. It's just plain and simple, and it's down to the nitty-gritty, amen. It's got down to the nitty-gritty now. If you don't know Jesus, right now, right now is the time, amen. Right now, don't wait another minute. Don't wait another day. Don't wait another week. Today is the day of salvation, amen. Today is the day of salvation. We need to get it took care of today. We need to get it took care of Listen, there's, there's no time limit on when Jesus is coming back. There's no way that we know what day or what hour. You know, I see that commercial all the time on TV. The, the man's sitting there at the table, and the waitress brings him a little, uh, a little sticky note thing that says, you're going to have a heart attack tomorrow at 3 o'clock. None of us know when Jesus is coming, amen. None of us know when our time is up. None of us know whenever it, we're going to have a heart attack tomorrow at 3 o'clock. We don't know that. There ain't no way for us to know that. But we do know that he's coming. We do know that Jesus is coming and it's not far away. So if you hadn't turned your heart and life over to Jesus, you go right ahead and do that right now. Amen. Just get it took care of right now. Amen. Then you ain't got to worry about it. Amen. Then if Jesus comes back, you're going to go with him. Glory to God. Well, praise the Lord. i tell you what. I got, got off on that. Amen. Listen, 1 Timothy. You got your Bibles and I know you do. We're going to go to 1 Timothy chapter 1, and we're going to start in verse 12. And the Bible says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor, and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all expectation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. This was Paul talking, and he said, he said this is a faithful saying and worthy of all expectation that, G, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. In other words, that's why Jesus came. He came to save sinners. Amen. That was his whole purpose on this earth. And then Paul goes on and says, of whom I am chief. Amen. In other words, in other words, Paul was the chief of sinners. Listen, you might think today, you might think that you've done something that you can't be forgiven of, but I'm here to tell you right now, glory to God, you hadn't done anything you can't be forgiven of. The only sin that you can't be forgiven of in the whole Bible is blaspheming the Holy Ghost, amen. If you're watching this, you're not blaspheming the Holy Ghost, amen. Glory be to God. Go back over here to verse 8. And the Bible says, But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. In other words, the law is not made for somebody that lives right, amen, that's already doing the law. It's not made for him. But for the lawless and the disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, and manslayers and whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for purged persons, and if they and if there be any other thing that is contrary 
to the sound doctrine. Amen. Uh, uh, Paul just named it off right there. He just named off all these things. And he said, he said, listen, if you've done any of them things, if you've done any of them things, he was, he was saying here, if you've done any of them things, you can still be forgiven. Amen. You can still be forgiven through, but you have to be forgiven through Jesus Christ. There's no other way to get forgiveness. There's no other way to talk to God. There's no other way to, to, to do anything. Only the way you can do anything is through Jesus Christ. We have to know Jesus Christ today. We have to know him personally. Amen. We have to talk to him every day and let him know that we're there and just and just call out to him. Amen. We have to let him know that we need him today. Amen. We have to let him know that, listen, we want to go when he steps out on that cloud. We got to say, look, Jesus, I'm down here and, and, uh, and if I'm doing something wrong or I'm uh, messed up here doing the wrong things, I want you to let me know, glory to God. I want you to help me to, to understand and to know that I'm doing the wrong thing. Amen. Listen, get in your Bible and start reading. It'll tell you how you're supposed to live. Amen. The, the law was not written for a righteous man. Listen, a, a righteous man lives right. Amen. That's what righteous means, right living. Amen. He lives right already. The law was written for those that are lawless. Amen. For those that don't live right. For those that don't do the right things. For those, listen, read that again. For those that do all that stuff that's in that scripture. Paul said, look what I was. Paul said, look. He said, before, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. Listen, Paul persecuted Christians, amen. Paul persecuted God's children. He persecuted them, beat them, put them in jail. He done all kinds of stuff. But then, one day on that road to Damascus, whoo, glory. Glory be to God. He was on that road to Damascus. Makes me think of that old song. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more in darkness. No more at night. Now I'm so happy. No sorrow inside. Well, praise the Lord. I saw the light. Oh, Paul saw the light on that road to Damascus. Hey man, the light come down and shined on Paul and it, and, it, and it got him just like that, knocked him to the ground, amen. Sometimes we need the light to come down out of heaven today and knock us to the ground, amen. Get us down there. Listen, we think it's bad and it's awful that, that we go through something, but sometimes we got to get knocked down there, amen. Sometimes we got to get put down there, glory to God, so God can show us the light, amen, so we can get the light. Glory to God. Turn that old darkness into light, amen. Let God turn your light switch on. Glory be to God. Listen, you walk into an old dark room and you reach around the wall and you can't, you can't even see the light switch and you reach and you fumble around and when you find that light switch is flipping on, all that darkness has to go, amen. All that darkness is gone, glory to God. That's the way it works, amen. You get Jesus in your heart. You get Jesus in your life and all that darkness is out of here, amen. The old devil has to go in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Praise the Lord, amen. Be what? Jesus loves you today. Jesus loves you, and he wants you to see that light, amen? He wants you to see that light. You might be the chief of sinners yourself, amen? You might be the chief of sinners in your family. You might be the chief of sinners in your neighborhood. You might be the chief of sinners that, uh, of people that live all around you. But I'm here today to tell you that God can save a chief of sinners, amen? God can save a chief of sinners, and he will if you'll ask him. But you gotta ask him. Amen. You gotta ask him. He's not gonna do it. He's not gonna do it on his own. He's not gonna make you be saved. Amen. You have to ask him. You have to want to. Amen. He created angels and he created angels to worship him. But he created us that we might worship him because we love him. Not because he created us to, but because we love him. Amen. And we have to love Jesus today. Ask Jesus into your heart today. If you don't know him, I tell you what, it's our heart's desire that you find him some way, somehow here. Listen, it, what the world needs is Jesus. We love you today. But the, the, the most thing that you could even think of today is Jesus loves you. Amen. That's the best thing that you could think about today is how much that Jesus loves you. How much he loves you that he gave his only begotten son just for you. Amen. That you could have life and have it eternal. Eternal life. We're going to live eternally somewhere, heaven or hell. 
it's your choice today. It's not my choice. It's not your mom and dad's choice. It's not your grandma, grandpa's, your brother, your sister. Uh, we can go down the whole line. It's not anybody's choice except yours today. And you make that choice yourself. God don't send people to hell. I've heard that forever. God does not send people to hell. Amen. They send their self there by not going by the Bible. They send their self there because they don't get in the Bible and read the Bible. Listen, people take grandma's word for it and grandpa's word for it. People take my word. Listen, don't take my word for it. Go to the Bible and read it yourself. Go get it. Read it yourself. Amen. Find out. Find out. God's got a place for you. God's got somewhere for you. And he wants you to get in it. Amen. I tell you what, if you'll get a hold of Jesus, he'll, he'll lead you and guide you wherever you need to go. Amen. I love the Lord today. I'm just excited today. If you have a prayer request, you can send a private message to facebook.com forward slash what the world needs is Jesus. You can call or text us, but, uh, Brother Ricky Phillips, which is me, 256-630-1262. Brother Larry Miles, 256-603-0641. Brother Kenneth Crane, 256-557-2858. And Brother Harold O'Neill, 256-475-5854. And these men would love to talk to you. Amen. They would enjoy talking to you, lead you to Jesus. If that's what you need. If you just need somebody to talk to, if you just need somebody to answer questions from the Bible, these men are so qualified and they're ready. They're ready to answer them questions. Amen. And they're qualified. Uh, uh, just give them a call. Any of them numbers. Amen. Uh, email us at what the world needs is Jesus TV at gmail.com. Until our next broadcast, may God richly bless you. Amen. Not long ago I was thinking of home and I wondered if mama was there all alone. I thought I by as I had before, but the sound from within made me stop at the door. She was praying a sound that the world said I'm here. That the world said I'm here.